Father, how are you today? The same as I was yesterday and the day before. Blind and useless. You are not useless, Father. No, I forgot. I am wonderful with the animals. There is no one better at watching the sheep in the fields. As to stone masonry, I can pick a plumb line better than anyone. There is more to our usefulness than physical work, Father. God's love for you is not based on what you do. I do not want your pity, boy. Just go to work. I wasn't pitying you. Father, I want to speak to our friends and family when they gather to celebrate baby Layla's birth. Oh, and you want to speak. I'm as good as dead. No, not to replace you, Father. But as the eldest son, I want to tell of my deliverance from prison. Oh, no. You want to tell that wild story to the entire family. I thought it would be better if they hear it directly from me. Are you asking me or telling me? I'm asking for your blessing. On what I feel, God is telling me to do. When have I been able to stop you before? Thank you, Father. Thank you for coming, everyone. My eldest, Dawood, has asked to speak. I do not agree with him, but he is my son. My father is a good man who has been very patient with me and he has given me permission to share with you the story of my deliverance from prison. I know you were all with us the night of Mariam and Yacoub's wedding. I am sorry that my trouble spoiled that evening. So I thought it'd be best that I'd be able to share with you the rest of the story and why I'm able to be here with you this evening to celebrate the birth of my niece, baby Layla. I'm sure you've all heard from my mother, Layla, about her faith in Jesus. She was always talking about the Messiah and she shared with me as well, of course, but I didn't believe her. I thought she had been led astray from the faith of our fathers. When I was arrested, I knew the Romans would probably execute me, and I was afraid. Afraid of pain, afraid of dying. But I knew my mother was praying for me, and that many of you were praying for me. I thank you for your prayers. One night, I was awakened by a light, a warmth shining through the blackness of that cell. I opened my eyes and saw a man standing before me. He was pure and holy, and his eyes were like fire. And then he spoke to me. He told me everything I had ever done. 
I thought my heart would break. And I wept. The other prisoners around me were sleeping, and here I was, face to the floor, weeping at the feet of the Lord Jesus. And I, I, I did not understand at first, but this past month I've learned from those who are much wiser than I. The scriptures say that when God created the world, he made the man and woman live in his presence and feel his joy. That was his plan. But they distrusted and disobeyed his command. And that shameful act separated them from God and ruined the close relationship between the man and woman. We too continue to disobey. The scriptures say that the result of this sinfulness is death and separation from God. But God does not want you to be cut off from him and his love, living in shame and fear. So just as he, provided a ram to die in place of Abraham's son. God sent us Jesus to die in our place. Surely you know this is outrageous. What about our traditions, the scriptures, the prophets? Cousin, hundreds of years before Jesus came, the prophets foretold in the scripture that the promised Messiah would suffer. Isaiah wrote, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. The prophet Moses declared, anyone hanging on a tree is cursed by God. When Jesus died on the cross, he took upon himself our curse of sin and death. His sacrifice and resurrection freed us from the power of evil and rescued us from darkness and redeemed us from a life of fear and shame. This blessing was promised by God to our ancestor Abraham when he said that through him all the peoples of the world would be blessed. Hear me, everyone. This same Jesus is the one who appeared to me in my prison cell. I believe. I know that he is the promised Messiah. He has died in my place and given me a new life. After my encounter with him, I found that I was no longer afraid to die. But as you can see, he delivered me from prison. I know he must have more for me to do, by all rights. I should have died with the other prisoners that were crucified this past month. You were in prison as a zealot, a fighter. Are you saying you've changed your mind about the Romans? I've seen that our deepest need in life is not political. Our real need is to be forgiven and reconciled with God. I was trying to change men's politics. God wants to change men's hearts. Why should we believe this Jesus was God's chosen one? Because God raised him from the dead. Rivka, who is here with us this evening, is close friends with one of the witnesses of that resurrection. Auntie Rivka, could you tell us what Mary Magdalene shared with you? Mary Magdalene spoke many times about this. She watch Jesus die and she saw his body laid in the tomb and then early on Sunday morning three days after Jesus was crucified Mary and the other women went back to the tomb carrying the spices they had prepared to anoint his body but when they arrived, they saw that the stone that had closed the tomb had been rolled away. The women thought that Jesus' body had been stolen. But then they saw two angels in the empty tomb. And the angels told them that Jesus had been raised from the dead. 
The women ran back to the other disciples to tell them of this, and then Peter and John ran back with the women to the tomb. And after everyone had left that place, Mary remained alone outside. She couldn't understand what was happening, and she began to weep. It was all so confusing. And then suddenly she realized she was not alone. A man talked to her, and he said, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? She thought it was the gardener. So she said, Sir, if you have taken his body, please, Tell me where you have put it, and I will go and get him. Then he called her by name. Mary. And as she looked up, she realized she was speaking to Jesus himself. He was there before her. She ran to him. and threw herself at his feet. Mary herself gave this testimony to me. And Jesus appeared many times to his followers over the next 40 days. And he taught them many things. Then, on the Mount of Olives, he ascended into heaven before their eyes. What does this mean for us, for me? Believe in the Lord Jesus and be baptized in his name. Trust in him and you will be saved from your sin and shame to live a new life with Jesus. I too have come to know the Messiah. He has changed my life and given me joy in my old age. And he has changed my life. And mine. And mine. God has made a new life available to anyone who will call upon his name. This is the good news Jesus shares with us tonight. He is alive and here in our midst right now. This is enough. I've been thinking about your Jesus. Oh? Mm -hmm. And Dawood's story. I don't understand it all, but I want to believe what you've told me is true. I want to believe, but... <sighs> what is holding you back? What would my parents say? If I became like you. I just don't think I have enough faith. I haven't ever seen Jesus like Dawood did. I haven't seen him in that way either. He shows himself to each of us in different ways. But you can always ask him. Ask him for what? For faith. For courage. Ask God to show you what is true. Could we pray together? Of course. Just... 
talk to him with your own words. From your heart. Out loud? Lord? I've heard so much these last few weeks, and it all sounds so good. I want to know you like my friends know you and believe in you and trust in you. Give me what I don't have. Give me faith and courage. Help me to know what is true. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I think... He heard me. I know that he did. <laughs> if I want to become Jesus' follower later, what should I do? Tell God that you believe that Jesus is Lord and Messiah and that he died on the cross for your sins. Accept Jesus' sacrifice and receive his forgiveness and freedom from all of your shame. Give your life up to him and then you will know that you have eternal life. If I do this, what about my parents? God wants you to be the best daughter your parents could have. But you need to, first of all, be his daughter and follow him. Mother and I used to come out here and watch the sunset. You miss her every day. Sometimes I think about how God has answered so many of her prayers. For the baby and for Dawood. But he took her from us. God's ways are not our ways. <laughs> no, but he is with us. In all of it, I know he is with me. I can talk to him about everything, anything. It doesn't always take the sorrow, the pain away, but he helps me bear it. It's as if I'm going through a desert place, but somehow because he is there, he makes the desert, even the driest, harshest place, rejoice. Which character in this story is most like you?
Do you admire Dawood for sharing his story with others? Why or why not? Retell the story Rivka heard from Mary Magdalene concerning Christ's resurrection. What is your response to Mariam and Dahlia's conversation as they wash dishes? What does Mariam and Rivka's final conversation tell you about your walk with God? <laughs> 